The following is a paid program and does not necessarily reflect the views or ideas of the staff or management of KWSH or the 110 Broadcast Group. Good morning and welcome to the Seminole Nation radio program. It's a beautiful August day here in Seminole, Oklahoma. I'll tell you what, it's nice and cool actually uh, for an August day. But uh, we'll take whatever we can get after the last few days. I've got a guest in the studio with me today. We're going to be talking to her in just a minute. Mrs. Martha Wynn. She is the director of the Older Americans program, which is in Wewoka, Uh so uh, <laughs> tell them good morning, Martha. Good morning. <laughs> it's good to have you here. Martha's <coughs> been around the tribe for quite a while. And uh, as a matter of fact, how many years have you been working for the tribe, Martha? I worked 13 years in Johnson O'Malley. I went to Creek Nation for five years, and I've been back for uh, 13 years. You've already been back December. 13? Yes. Wow. Wow. <coughs> so we're going to be talking to Martha just in a little bit about the uh, program uh, and we're going to talk about the menu, too. But first, um, it's customary, and we do it every week. We're going to uh, announce the fourth and eighth Sunday meetings for the Native American churches, Creek Seminole churches in our area uh, this coming week. Uh, now, I want to remind you that a lot of churches have church every Sunday, but these are only fourth and eighth Sundays. So, uh, first of all, to start with, and uh, Martha's going to help me a little bit with this a little bit, uh, Agena, that's a Presbyterian church, isn't it, Martha? I, I think so. Yeah, it's a yes. Presbyterian church Seminole, uh, here in the Seminole Nation. As a matter of fact, I think it's located out here south of Seminole, just a few miles, uh, somewhere near Bowlegs. Next, uh, Alabama Baptist Church, and that's down near Walitka. Also, Alabama Quasardi Baptist Church, and that's between Dustin and Wetumpka. Also, Belvin Baptist Church in Oak Mulgee. Cedar Springs Baptist Church, that's way over in Cherokee country, isn't it, Martha? Mm, close yeah. to Gore. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I guess you guys probably, and Martha's husband, by the way, is uh, Reverend Jesse Wynn. You guys probably travel all over to all these churches, I'm sure. We have church every Sunday and Wednesday, so we pretty much stay close yeah. to home. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <clears throat> also, Cold Springs Baptist Church, that's down near the river, near Conawa. Hutchijeva Baptist Church, and that's over near Henrietta. Little Kawita. Little Kawita, I, if I'm not mistaken, that's that may be the one that's over near uh, Schulter. Uh, yeah, I think it's a Methodist church. Is that right? I'm not sure. I'm okay. not sure about that one. Okay. Also, Little Quasadi Baptist Church near Cromwell. Mini Springs Baptist Church, that's on Holdenville Lake, beautiful Holdenville mm-hmm. Lake. Also, Okmulgee Baptist Church, just out there north of Okmulgee. Prairie Springs Baptist Church, and that's over uh, west of Okima. Spring Baptist Church, and that's near Bowlegs. Wilgofke Baptist Church near Hannah. West Eufaula Baptist Church near West U- uh, near Eufaula. We woke with you Methodist Church, and that's near Jaeger. And also, uh, Yardika. <coughs> Baptist Church, and that's uh, up there near Henrietta as well. Those are your church meetings for this week, and uh, I guess at one time or another, you guys have probably visited all those churches there, huh? Almost all of them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, my grandpa was a preacher, so he liked to travel and visit churches, and I think we hit, I've been to every church in the Creek and Seminole Nations. <laughs> All right. As I mentioned a while ago, Martha is the director of the Older Americans program, and uh, we asked her here to tell us a little bit about that. We announce the menu every week for the week, Martha, but uh, and I try to explain the program as how it operates and uh, what it's intended for and things like that. But you know what? I want to say something before we move on. I want to take just a second, and uh, I don't have any kind of an obituary or anything, but 
many of you may or may not know, and the reason I'm doing it now is because he's a patron of the Older Americans program. I think it's over the weekend we lost uh, yes. m uh, Mr. Uh, Tony Martin. Lloyd. Lloyd, Lloyd okay, Martin. Lloyd Known Martin. Bear. Everybody Sugar call him Bear. Sugar Bear. Sugar yes. Bear. And I'll tell you, it was a shock to me when I heard that because he's there every day faithfully. Yes. And uh, I sure hated to hear that. And, you know, Martha, I remember in high school, me and a friend of mine uh, were running around over this way. And uh, we were in high school. And he said, man, I heard about this guy over at Pleasant Grove, Indian guy, great basketball, basketball player. Let's go watch him. And we went over to watch him. I'd never heard of him. I'd never seen him. And uh, so we went and we paid our admission, went into a gym at uh, Pleasant Grove. I'd never been to Pleasant Grove. And when they came out on a court, I'll tell you what, that court just, I mean, the, the crowd just went crazy. Sugar Bear come running out with that little stuffed bear in his hand. And he, <laughs> I guess he was a captain of the team. Man, I'll tell you what, he played lights out basketball from start to finish. That mm -hmm. guy was a basketball player. Now. He was gifted. Yeah. We sure hate to hear about that, but I just wanted to take a minute. Uh, to give my condolences to all of the family and to all of his friends at the Older Americans program uh, yes. uh, on the passing of uh, Sugar Bear. So well, with that said, let's move on. Uh, tell us a little bit about your program, Martha. Well, we serve um, senior citizens from 55 and up, uh, Native Americans. Our program is uh, with the, the vision of the health and human services and um, grant and uh, we provide one meal for them a day and um, it's uh, Monday through Thursday lunch and on Friday we serve breakfast. Our lunches are served from 1130 to 1230 and our breakfasts are served from 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock. That's great I, and by the way as she mentioned it's for any Native American in Seminole County, and since it's federally funded, it's it's uh, as long as you're enrolled with a federally recognized tribe. Yes. Right? We require a CDIB card, a Certificate Degree of Indian Blood, mm -hmm. and we uh, enroll them on our program. And so we what we provide our services, we also have a, a report that we submit mm -hmm. monthly and uh, quarterly and mm -hmm. annually. Let me ask you a question. I'm going to get technical here. I said a resident of Seminole County. If you're a Native American, 55 or older, then you're eligible and you may not necessarily live in Seminole County, right? Yes. If you happen to be in Wewoka that day and you're 55 and over and you're Native American, say you're at the clinic, mm -hmm. drop on by with your CDIB and you can have lunch yes yes we service all native americans that can uh, produce their cdib and if they're just there um, at the clinic or in near we woke then they can drop by and we give i'm your them i'm your memory. greatest testament to that i i i love eating over there whenever i'm in that area and i'm over pretty regular but um i love eating at the oap you guys got some good nutritious food i uh I've noticed one thing. There's uh, other elder feeding programs, and uh, they get, uh, you know, their menus sometimes include uh, dishes that Native Americans just ain't exactly used to. Uh, mm -hmm. And I'm sure it's on their nutrition guide and everything, but you guys cook some good stuff now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you got red beans at least <laughs> once a week. And everybody loves that. Yeah, you know, I guess I guess once a week. I don't know. No, we no. don't, sir. Well, it, uh, we've changed the menu quite a bit, so mm -hmm. we don't serve uh, red beans as often as yeah. uh, as we used oh, to. Oh well, beans. You yeah. Know. Uh, any any yeah, beans. You guys, you guys yeah. got like. Uh, as a matter of fact, what's for lunch today? Baked country style ribs. Oh man. And um, mixed vegetables mm -hmm. and um, well slipped my mind but we have ice cream for dessert and um i'll tell you what i'll tell you exactly what you're gonna have all right uh we're gonna start with today tuesday and go until next monday you got baked country style ribs mixed vegetables coleslaw and ice cream yes then tomorrow chicken and dumplings yes. fried okra and watermelon 
Then Thursday, hamburger steak, mashed potatoes, gravy, broccoli and cauliflower, hot rolls, and jello. Man, them hot rolls are good. Yes, they are. And then on Friday, as Martha mentioned, breakfast is 8 o'clock till 9 o'clock <clears throat> on Fridays. Pancakes, scrambled eggs, bacon, biscuits and gravy, cereal, and milk. And then next Monday, cabbage with smoked sausage, uh, potatoes all gratin, cornbread, and pudding. See there, I told you all, good stuff, good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. All right, Martha, I'm glad you came out today. And uh, is there anything that you wanted to add as far as the Older Americans program? Is there anything besides food? Uh, we do try to uh, plan some activities. We celebrate birthday every month, mm-hmm. and we also have... Um, a bazaar that we have like every quarter yeah and it's just so that they can have uh some uh fellowship with each other be able to come out and uh, look through other people's things Mm -hmm. and um we just try to do things so that they can have a little longer time to fellowship otherwise Mm -hmm. we're we're there and they come in on a transit bus so they have a schedule, so they are limited. Delaney Pinnock and I are going to get with you pretty soon about incorporating a little bit of language stuff with your program. That'll, That'll be cool. Uh, yeah. And so, uh, hey, it was good to have you today. Have you got anything else you want to add? I was just going to say that we are, our program also provides a caregiver's program. And uh, we have a respite program, and it's for, like, temporary relief for Mm -hmm. people that do uh, caregiving. Mm -hmm. And to find out more about it, they could contact uh, Juanita Wise with with the caregivers program. And she is taking applications to try to get more respite. Um, Come on out today at 1130 or any day at 1130 except Friday. And uh, you can uh, talk to her and come and eat lunch and visit with Martha and Say hey to Nellie, huh? Yes. <laughs> Uh-oh, we got a birthday over the weekend. Is yes. that right? All right. Happy birthday, Martha. Thank you. Good. Good. Tell Jesse I said hello, and uh, thank you for coming on today. Well, thank you for having All me. All right. Enjoyed it. All right. Madhu. Uh-huh. All right. At this time, I'm going to take a little short break, and we're going to listen to Jeremy Fultz and Highlights from the Nation. Istongo Seminologi, this is Jeremy Fultz with Highlights from the Nation. On August the 7th, the Historic Preservation Office sponsored the Independence Day celebration with a traditional dinner, door prizes, and guest speakers Jake Tiger and Dr. Daniel Littlefield, who is the director of the Sequoia Research Center at the University of Arkansas and is the author of Seminole Burning. Here's Rodney Factor to tell a little bit about Wednesday's program. That less than 200 years ago, there was a policy of the United States government to exterminate us, to exterminate our people. That's what they were fighting 185 years ago today. They were fighting for their very lives, their very existence. And uh, as they were captured uh, uh, at that time and brought to Oklahoma as prisoners of war, and uh, they settled around Fort Gibson area, then uh, uh, the agreement had been made before that Seminoles would have their own their own territory, their own lands, and, and be able to govern themselves. And the federal government wasn't doing that. And they wanted uh, our people to merge with the Creeks. And, and uh, at that time, as it seems like always, since Europeans came, then there's always been a deal of politics. And that was going on then over slaves, property, and uh, our people maintained that we have a right to our own land and they refused to, to move over and, and uh, merge with the Creeks. And uh, the federal government at that time we too withheld rations from them, starved them in the winter and withheld blankets from them. Uh, they brought a, a great hardship on our people, even though our people had just been, came through that long costly war of extermination. And those that survived and were brought here as prisoners in chains, uh, the warriors, you know, then they were once again, you know, persecuted because they refused to follow uh, the uh, uh, United States government. And, uh, and that went on for 20 years, that resistance. And Mark Williams is currently working on a recap that will be posted on the communications Facebook page 
so be sure to keep an eye out later this week. And that is your highlights from the nation. Mado jigajigishji! All right, welcome back to Seminole Nation radio program. Hey, I'll tell you what, that was a great event. They started that a few years ago, and the uh, Independence, uh, Seminole Independence Day uh, celebration has grown into a good event. Uh, if you want to know about uh, Seminole history and Seminole tradition and things like that, that's a good event to go to every year. we got a few more notes here, and then we're going to visit with another guest in the studio, Mr. R- Randy Ahady. Yep. All right, Randy Ahady and uh, Delaney Pinnock, uh, they recently had a little project going on where they got to go to Tallahassee, Florida. We're going to be talking about that in just a minute. But first of all, uh, the general council, next general council meeting will be September the 7th, 2019. And that's the chief's annual report date. Um, quarterly reports are due August 23rd. And uh, you can go to the council meeting that day and get a report regarding all activities of the most, uh, Seminole Nation and all of their programs and the chief's annual report as well. Also... On August the 15th, um, that's this week at the Council House at 6.30, a Finance Committee presentation. Uh, They'll be discussing the fiscal year 2020 budget. Uh, So come on out. That's at the Council House at the Miccosukee Mission. The Seminole Nation Division of Commerce has announced that uh, they're seeking approval from the people of the nation to join the Intertribal Buffalo Council. Uh, It's a first step in exploring the possibility of bringing bison to Seminole tribal lands, not only as a way to preserve and increase the North American bison herd, but also as a business venture that will put a dormant asset of tribal land to use. Uh, This is strictly, the membership is strictly limited to federally recognized Indian tribes. The Intertribal Buffalo Council is a cooperative of Indian tribes and not a government organization. So, That's the Seminole Nation Division of Commerce. They want your input. Uh, Their phone number is 405-382-3562. Also, free food for seniors. Seminole Nation Commodity Supplemental Food Program is given uh, food for uh, senior citizens of Seminole County. That's any elder, not just Native American, any elder age 60 or older residing within Seminole County that meets income guidelines. For more information, you can call 405-234-5240. Seminole Nation Head Start is accepting applications for enrollment for income-eligible tribal and non-tribal children ages 6 weeks to 5 years of age. Uh, They've got a lot of services for those children. For more information, call the Miccosukee Mission Center at 405-234-5226. Here's the uh, uh, supply distribution dates for Seminole County JOM uh, supplies. Let's see. Uh, On uh, August the... I'm sorry. I guess these have already been done. So all of the supplies have been delivered already. So, well, that's great. Coming up this Friday, Seminole Nation of Oklahoma Language Program presents a quarterly elders language forum entitled Muscogee Seminole Creek Religion and Spirituality, A Correlation of Views. And it's basically a discussion by our elders of the differences or similarities between traditional and contemporary beliefs and the teachings of our people and those of our ancestors. So uh, that's going to be this Friday at the Pomahaga School located at 35531 East West 1170 Road. Starts at 11 o'clock and goes until 2 o'clock. This is a potluck event, so uh, bring your favorite dish and listen to the elders. Tell us what of all their knowledge about our spirituality. Water aerobics Monday and Wednesdays. Uh, classes begin August 19th until November the 6th at Seminole State College. And uh, applications are needed and available at Seminole Nation uh, DP Diabetes Program. Uh, you can call Jordan Harjo at 405-234-5275 and, um, or 5246. 
chair aerobics every Tuesday and Thursday. It's already started August 6th, but it goes until October 24th. If you want to participate in that, it's at the Senior Citizen Center uh, from 1 o'clock to 2 o'clock every Tuesday and Thursday. Uh, once again, you can you have to have an application. They're available at Seminole Nation Diabetes Program. and uh, Or contact uh, Jordan Harjo at 405-234-5246. Coming up on August the 24th in Tulsa, Oklahoma, Native American Youth Summit uh, featuring Chance Rush, MC1, and Chasky Spencer. Uh, this uh, event uh, will focus on careers, goal setting, relationships, and college preparation for students entering grades 8 through the 12th. I saw Chance Rush just over the weekend, Delaney. I, yeah, I, saw, I ran across him in Tulsa. Uh, great guy. So that'll be August the 24th. All right, just a few mentions here about Seminole Nation Days. It's going to be the third week of September in 2019, 20th, 21st, and 22nd. Um, starting with Seminole Nation Days Golf Tournament on September the 6th. Uh, for, if you want information about that, call Heather Napier or Travis Wilson at 405-217-0176. Also, Seminole Nation Days 5K, one and one mile run and walk. This is open to the public, free of charge. Uh, if you want more information about that, or if you want to pre-register, call 405-257-7364. Uh, T-shirts for the first 100 to register, and race medals to the first 100 5K finishers. First, second, third place recognition for each group. Also coming up, uh, uh, Seminole Nation Baby Pageant, um, I believe. Let's see, I don't... Mm, bah, 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 bah. Well, it says the deadline has been extended to September the 6th. If I'm not mistaken, that's September the 15th, the baby pageant. Hmm. I don't, oh, September the 14th at 9 a.m. at the Kelly Haney Center, Seminole State College. If you'd like to enter your child in that, um, contact them at... Uh, Seminole Nation Division of Commerce on their Facebook page. Or you can come to their office at 2115 West Wrangler Boulevard. Seminole Nation Day's annual Storm Dance, Friday, September 20th, 2019. Supper's at 5.30 to 6.30. Buffalo Dance will start right at 7. And Storm Dance starts till 7.30 till 11 o'clock. Everyone come out and enjoy the evening of dancing and door prizes. Host ground will be Fish Pond. Seminole Nation Day's Little Boys East and West Stickball Game coming up September 21st at 11.15 uh, a.m. All right. Seminole Nation Day's Pow Wow, Saturday, September 21st. Uh, registration opens at 3 o'clock. Uh, of course, the gourd dance will start at, uh, I believe, uh, 2 o'clock and go to 6 and then take a supper break from 6 to 7. Resume gourd dancing at 7 to 7.45. Then grand entry is 8. Once again, Registration opens at 3 o'clock until 6 o'clock. Seminole Nation Day's Youth Fishing Derby. That's going to be on Saturday, uh, September 22nd at the Miksuki Mission Pond from 8 to 11. Registration starts at 8 o'clock. Seminole Nation Day's Adult Co-Ed 5-on-5 Basketball Tournament. Uh, $150 entry fee. There's a lot of rules uh, associated with this. For more information, contact Jerome Harrison at 405-234-5273. And finally, uh, the VA will be holding a Bringing VA Benefits Home event in your hometown. Uh, you can speak with a VA representative, get answers to VA claims and benefit questions, file your claim, get same-day decisions if you've got complete information. Uh, this is going to be at Seminole State <laughs> College Haney Building on August 21st from 12 to 4 and August 22nd from 9 o'clock to 4 o'clock. Uh, for more information, contact Galen Greenwald at 405-234-5242. Man, we got a lot of announcements today, Delaney. <laughs> I got a guest in the studio, and uh, I'm going to let you guys introduce yourself and tell me what you're here about because it's pretty exciting. I know it is. Oh. Uh, I'm Randy I Haiti. Uh, just I Haiti. I Haiti, yes, Are sir. you sure you're seven old man? Hey, my mom is. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I'm teasing. I know he is. Yeah, go ahead. But, yeah, uh, 
recently we did the summer field school for the Seminole Nation's Historic Department. Yes. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Just a couple of weeks ago we did a field school, then the week later we did it, we took a trip to Tallahassee, and that was pretty fun. Yeah. Hey, I went out there one day, and you guys were, I mean, you guys were doing a lot of different things. You were, you know, uh, for example, you were, you were even learning how to plot land uh, yeah, with these electrons. Yeah. Yeah, Daniel Atkinson. Yeah, right. and uh, learn how to plot cemeteries, yeah. old cemeteries, and learn how to shoot blowguns and, <laughs> and all kinds of stuff. And that was just while you were having your summer field school here, but then you guys went on to Tallahassee, Florida. Yeah. Delaney, uh, Ted. Talk about that a little bit. That was uh, Tall Timbers up there. <coughs> uh, the forest. Yeah, um, conservationist. Oh, yeah. So they had 4,000 acres down there. We spent two days with them, and they talked to us about fire ecology. Mm -hmm. So something I never knew about. I just Took figured, you back to the homelands and yeah, learned yeah. about the Everglades. Oh, yeah. So mm -hmm. we learned how they kind of controlled their environment down there and keep things under control. You so. spent two days down there, but how many days at the airport? Oh, yeah. wow. too long, yeah. But I was Same, amount of, time. Same <laughs> amount of time. Two days. <laughs> I changed my address. So. Hey, Russell, what did you take away from this summer field school more than anything? What the main things? The main things. Um, wow, well, I don't know. Well, I guess like the ecology part. When mm -hmm. They said, talking about the prescribed fires, they actually have evidence that the tribes around there did that before yes, the, they did. Col the mm -hmm. colonists came. I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't even know the prescribed fires was a thing, that mm -hmm. people would burn land. And then to find out that your ancestors did that was a pretty cool thing too. Mm -hmm. I've, I've, I was, a, I was real small. I was 11 years old, but I was in the Everglades before, and I was in the Everglades when it was a little more old timey. Back when they had dirt roads mm -hmm. everywhere, and, yeah. and I did see that. I did see that they did that. You know what's sad is at the time I was there, they didn't realize they were what was happening, and it wasn't the native tribes that was doing it. It was the government, but they were draining the swamps trying to expand their land base mm -hmm. and things like that down there. For the ecology, that wasn't the smartest thing in the world yeah. to do. And we're learning it now. Yeah. 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 So did you guys get to see the swamps and the, and the canals and oh. the alligators <laughs> and all that stuff? Yeah, we went on the Wasissa River and, to go kayaking, and there were alligators everywhere. <laughs> so that's one thing I would I, – I I'll keep that in the past. I'll let my answer just keep that. I don't need to be – around the, all those alligators <laughs> i told him to dive in but he was checking <laughs> out <laughs> hey i'm gonna tell you a little story uh, real quickly when i was in florida me and my grandpa were staying with a guy named josie billy yeah uh one night there was a thunderstorm big thunderstorm a lot of rain everywhere and i before that i had been swimming in a little canal close to his house next to the road uh i'd been over there swimming a time or two me and some of his grandsons but one morning after a big rainstorm and there was a lot of flooding and stuff like that I walked out to that road and looked in that canal, and a high line pole had fell off in the water, and it had electrocuted everything in that canal. Oh, wow. There was a freaking alligator in there, and I had been swimming in that thing, oh, man. man. I scared me to death. I, I never, I never did it again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I bet you saw a lot of things that you never saw before. I mean, just. Oh my goodness, where to start? It's a whole nother world. Yeah, isn't it? it really, it mm -hmm. truly is. Uh, even in the Tall Timbers area, like you kind of see like what your ancestors seen yeah all the the forest area and we're hoping to see alligators out there but i didn't see any but wow the, the landscape out there is just beautiful yeah jurassic park that's what exactly what i said <laughs> yeah, exactly what i said when we're on the Wasissa river i was like yeah. man this is jurassic park I, that's, I, I, that's I, the way i felt when i was a kid of course I, the movie wasn't out then but i remember how i felt and it was like a whole nother world like jurassic park you know yeah mm -hmm. yeah I saw birds I'd never seen before. Mm -hmm. I saw reptiles I'd never seen before. And it's even different now from when I was there. Now they got boa constrictors and anacondas oh, that yeah. have escaped mm -hmm. and become wild and yeah, thrived places. in Florida. Yeah. Yeah. That's weird. Yeah. But like you said, the Jurassic Park thing. It's like you are just thrown into history when you're just out there with, when there's like away from civilization almost. But it was, I liked it. Did this inspire you to go back? Oh, yeah. I'll definitely, I'll definitely go back in the future. Yeah, how about you, Delaney? What's your what was your what made the biggest impression on you? Uh, I learned a little bit about a lot. Um, the first week, our band chief Ella Coleman of uh, OGZ Band came in and spoke, and what I took from that was uh, she spoke a little bit about where the name comes from, OGZ Issy, so Hickory Leaf. I didn't know that, and how we're made up of a lot of smaller bands or people from other tribes. So mm -hmm. 
that'll stick with me forever. Mm -hmm. I didn't, you know, that's who I am. So that identifies where I come from. So yeah. that means did, a lot. Did you guys get to interact with the, the tribal people there much? No, no. We okay, didn't, that's so. what you need to do. You need to go to Okeechobee, mm -hmm. Big Cypress, and those places where the people live. Man, I'll tell you, that's in a whole nother world. I mean, they're Muscogee, but when you, and, and especially at Brighton, they speak Muscogee. Mm -hmm. And, but they've got a, almost a, a, a whole culture, you know, that's, that's Muscogee, and yet they have adapted to the Florida Everglades. And so, you know, their, their lifestyles are just so much different. Mm -hmm. I, uh, when I was there before, I know that even their food and their clothing and their houses, you know, they lived, a lot of them had summer dwellings outside their house mm -hmm. called Chiquis. You know what a Chiqui is. And that's where they lived in the summertime because nobody had air conditioning back in those days. And they had these chiquis. They'd cook out there, and they'd live under those great big arbors. And it was nice and cool under there. You know, and they, everybody was barefooted. Everybody wore patchwork, you know. And it was just amazing. Orange trees growing out in the yard. We went to their churches and uh, just got a lot in touch with the culture. So when you go back, make sure you go visit those people. That's great. Oh, yeah, definitely. Anything you want to add before we come to the end of the show? Uh, if there are any Florida Seminoles listening, invite us out. We'd like to come down and stay <laughs> a few days with y'all. Hey, they'll feed you turtle soup, man. Hey, I'd like to try that. Yeah. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm down to try everything. <laughs> hey, listen, I'm glad you joined us today here on KWSH uh, for the Seminole uh, Nation radio uh, program. See. Yes, sir. I'd like to thank uh, Joy and Brigida for yes. allowing us to participate. Oh, yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thank you, guys. Mm -hmm. All right. So, uh, once again, I want to thank you all for joining us here on KWSH AM 1260, FM 97.7 for the Seminole Nation radio program. We'll be back next week. You know, I really miss Joe Coon, but uh, we'll make it. I guess we'll be all right. But, oh.